Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be part six in our survival game series, and today we'll be creating a main menu for our survival game. Now, like the previous two episodes, you don't actually have to be caught up to episode six in order to follow along, since we're just going to be making a main menu, and you can apply this to any project that you might already have. The first thing we're going to do is create a new level, and I'm just going to create a default level and the default new level comes with some lighting and sphere reflection captures and a nice little play space. We're just going to delete that floor. That way we can go ahead and save our level since we've made some changes. This is just going to be called Main Menu Level. There we go. Now we have that in our Maps folder since we saved it there. The next thing we can do is go ahead and create a widget. This is going to be our main menu widget and we're just going to go ahead and spawn this on screen as soon as we start playing the level. Let's call it main menu widget. Go ahead and open up your main menu widget and as soon as you open it up it should just be a blank widget. We're going to add a component here called text. We'll add that right onto the canvas panel and center that right up with the anchor on the top middle there. Zero out the exposition and alignment 0.5. Let's go ahead and bring it down probably I'd say about mm, 200 units and we're going to size this to the content. That way the little border around it will change its size depending on our text size. Let's do something like 120 text size and we'll change the text content to survival game. And we can up the outline size just so we have that little black border around it. And next we can go to shadow color, change the alpha to one, and then let's do something like 10 and 10. So we have a nice little shadow drop off going towards the bottom right. Actually, I think that might be a little bit too low for the title let's go ahead and start off with some buttons our first button is going to be our start game button and let's just anchor that right to the center of the screen there we go alignment 0 0.5 0 0.5 that way it's directly in the center of the screen and we're gonna duplicate this text and slap the duplicated text right on top of the button now if we size the content it'll be surrounding our text. Pretty easy. Let's go ahead and change that text that we have on our button. Call it Start Game. Just highlight this whole amount here and Start Game. Bring the text down to something reasonable like mm, probably 80. There we go. I'm liking the look of that. Let's change the color of our button though. We'll use background color on our button so we can go ahead and change that color. Something like a nice slightly faded green. There we go. Perfect. I'm going to just be nice and tidy, rename my button. This is called Start Button. There we go. So we have a Start Button and a Title here. Next we're going to need a Quit Button. Let's duplicate our Start Button. Just change the name to Quit Button. And they're stacked right on top of each other, so make sure that we go ahead and offset that. Bring that down to something like 300. And we'll grab the text, just say quit game. Lastly, we'll need something in the background. I'll go ahead and add an image. Make sure to put it on the top here. That way it's behind everything that's underneath it. We're going to anchor that just to take up the whole screen with no offsets. There we go. Now we have that white image taking up the whole screen. And I'm going to import just something real quick. Go to my downloads and I'm going to put that in my textures folder. That way I have access to just a random image that I pulled off of Google. You can use whatever image you want. It's just going to be used as our background. In fact, I even named it background. Under brush, we'll have this image here. We can go ahead and just type in the name of the texture that we dragged in. And we have a nice little background. All right, so we have our display ready on our widget. This is what our menu is going to look like. Now let's get to that functionality, which should actually be pretty easy. On our Start Game button, we'll have that clicked on, and we'll go to these events. When the Start button is clicked, and also let's go to Quit button. When that is clicked, we'll have things happen when we click those. Obviously, we can go ahead and just do Quit Game 
when we click our quit game button that's just gonna work right off the bat really easy but when we click our start button we're gonna have to change our input mode to game only and then open up the first level that we want to play in our game when we're using our main menu our input mode is gonna be UI only and you'll see it in action just here in a little bit but when we play the game we want it to be game only that way we have input for only the game so on event construct I'm going to get a reference to my player controller that way I can go ahead and change my input mode at any time and I'll already have casted to my player controller we're gonna to wanna to use that reference multiple times in this menu so let's just cast to it once and then we'll have it in a variable get player controller and we'll go ahead and promote that to a variable and we're gonna rename that simply player controller when we click the start button we're gonna to wanna to open a level and we'll just type in directly what the name of the level is that's gonna be our third person example map <laughs> make sure to type it in correctly here because otherwise it'll just fail if it doesn't exactly match one of your existing levels and this is kind of a clunky name we should actually change that uh, let's go to our maps third person example map let's just call this level one now we can change this here to level one much easier to remember so on this new level that we just created how do we get that widget to populate well we'll just use the main level blueprint open that up and this is the main level blueprint if you don't know what a level blueprint is basically every level has their own little section for blueprints but it'll be specific for the level that the blueprint is in and what we're gonna do on this level blueprint is create a widget at begin play what's the widget that we're gonna create it's gonna be the main menu widget promote that to variable call it main menu and then we're gonna add that directly to the viewport and if we try this right now you'll see that we actually have a couple problems because our input mode hasn't been changed for our player controller so it looks like I don't have any issue but if I click anywhere else on the menu now I've lost control of my mouse cursor so I can't really click on anything I can't interact with the menu at all we're gonna have to change our input mode in order to make this work the way that we think it should work we're gonna do that inside of our widget in our widget we already have a reference to our player controller and if you followed any of my tutorials in the past you might already know what we're gonna do but we're gonna create a function with an input that will allow us to easily set our input mode so let's go ahead and create an input and this is gonna be UI only question mark and we'll go ahead and set that variable every single time we call this function it'll be really easy we're actually only gonna call it twice the first thing that we're going to want to do is get a branch off of the UI only if our input mode is UI only then we're gonna get our player controller and we're gonna set our input mode to UI only and what's the widget that we're gonna focus on well we're gonna focus on ourself the main menu widget then we're gonna show mouse cursor and we can just use the same variable get UI only and plug that right in there if you didn't know this in functions if there's an input you can actually just call a reference to whatever that input is by typing it in get and then the name of it so in this case it would be UI only even though I don't have any variables called that here in this section since it's part of this function I can call that variable in this function really helpful if UI only is false then we're gonna do the exact opposite we're going to set input mode to game only then we're going to show mouse cursor and that value is going to be equal to get UI only as well since it'll be false if we're calling it in this case let's rename the function here set input mode and that's perfect so we can go ahead and call that here when we hit the start button and is it UI only no it's not it's gonna be game only when we call it here and open our first level and then here we're gonna to wanna to get our main menu and set input mode and yes it's gonna be UI only 
Now if we go ahead and play test our game, we'll have the proper input mode so I can click anywhere. As soon as I click quick game and actually quits, start game, it opens up our first level and it actually sets the input to game only so my mouse cursor is hidden and I can interact with my world just as you would expect. So the functionality portion of this tutorial is done. If that's all you wanted, just a working simple main menu, that's what you have. The rest of this tutorial is just going to be on making the menu look a little bit better. Right now, I'm not really a fan of how generic this looks. It looks like something you might find on a website, um, eBombs World or something like that. I want something that is kind of impressive. So let's go back to our widget and what we're going to do is erase this image and add something called a background blur. We're going to put that where the image was with the value of something like 2 in the blur strength. We're going to do the same thing though. It's going to cover the entire background with no offsets. And for this part you do have to have followed up to this point through the tutorials since we're going to use assets like uh, landscape material and foliage in order to make this background look a lot better. We're not going to need a large landscape since it's just going to be fixed from one point of view so let's do something like 15 by 15 quads and actually I'm going to go ahead and move that quite a bit so it looks like we have more space. On our landscape we can make the brush a little bit bigger make it look like there's some nice hills and valleys around here from our play okay that doesn't look that great but that's fine next thing we need to do is add a landscape material to our landscape I'm just gonna use the same material instance from level one which was our third person example map and when we add that material, you'll see that it's completely black. And why is that? That's because we need to create these layers specifically for our main menu level. We'll add a weight blended layer. Go ahead and just click OK. Weight blended layer and weight blended layer. OK. And now our landscape is populated with grass. We can go ahead and paint a little bit of our other textures on there just to give it some life make it seem a little more realistic. Some cobblestone might be nice. There we go. So the landscape is looking all right. Now we need to go ahead and add some foliage. So I'm going to use some of those meshes from my foliage pack. Add some bushes maybe, some trees, some different types of trees. I might even add some of these trees so we have a nice variation. Add a couple rocks and some patches of grass. All right, so with all, all, right, so with all of these, I'm just going to select them all, change the density to something like 2, radius to something like 50. So let's go ahead and select a tree and I actually don't want it to align to the normal. This is really bumpy here, so I want them going straight up. It's going to seem a little nicer in our final picture. And I'm just going to sporadically add some plant life. And eventually we'll get a pretty good image for our camera to go in front of. Alright, so this is looking alright, not the best. I would probably spend a little bit more time on this. And we're going to set the sun a little bit underneath the horizon so we can get some sort of sunset-like look. 
Okay, so it took forever to build lighting, but that's fine. Now that that's done, we can grab our player start and pilot it. And wherever we move to now will be where we start the game as. It's going to be our background. All right, so I think I like this spot here. Seems pretty good. I'm just going to leave it right here. We'll go ahead and exit our player start. If you didn't know, you can pilot just about anything in the whole level by right clicking on it and clicking on pilot that'll help you put things in very precise locations and when we start playing we'll get a darker screen that brightens up over time the foliage that I'm using kinda shifts like the winds blowing it I really like that aesthetic and nice so the buttons will still work we have a really nice background and there we go so at this point, there's probably one last thing that we want to do with our main menu, and that is play some music in the background. We'll go ahead and stop playing. We'll need to import some audio. Make sure whatever audio you do import is a .wav file. I'm just going to use Audacity to change one of my MP3s into a .wav file really fast. For that, all you have to do is import the file, go ahead and export as a .wav, and I'll send it to my downloads folder nice now I can go to my downloads folder and grab that dot wave file drag it right in so now we have our music that we want to play the only thing we have to do is go back to our level blueprint and play sound 2d plug that right in at the end the sound that we're gonna choose is the one that we just imported and now whenever we play the level it'll play automatically And that's really it for making a decent main menu. Of course, you can change how these buttons look. You can make them look like images or any custom shapes that you might want them to look like. I think for our purposes, for the survival game demo, this is pretty good. Just nice little green rectangles. And there we go. So really not bad. Hopefully you learned something from this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe to the channel if you're interested in learning more about Unreal Engine 4 game development. I'm here to help you think like a game developer, so stick around for more videos like this.